here with uh, Dr. James Rippey. Uh, Dr. Rippey, what do you think the key findings are from recent controlled trials about sugar-sweetened beverage? Well, I think the, the, the key issue here when, when it comes to sugar-sweetened beverages has to do with doing trials that actually look at the way we consume these beverages, at the levels we consume these beverages. There's a lot of confusion out because there are a lot of people who, in the scientific community who are doing research trials comparing pure fructose to pure glucose, often at very large doses. We don't consume pure fructose and pure glucose. We always consume them together. And so the focus on our research trials over the last few years has been to compare sucrose, which is half fructose and half glucose, to high fructose corn syrup, which is essentially half fructose and half glucose. So I think the key issues are going to be how do we understand sugars in the way we consume them at the doses we consume them? And in your studies, when you provided those, uh, those sugars in a way that we usually consume them, uh, have you found any metabolic issues? I think the first and most important thing is when you compare high fructose corn syrup to sucrose, by every parameter that have been measured in human beings yet, there is no difference. Uh, high fructose corn syrup and sucrose, as you would expect, high fructose corn syrup was developed as a substitute for sucrose in certain food applications. We st still, in the United States, consume more sucrose than we do high fructose corn syrup, but both of them have the same sweetness, the same number of calories, they're absorbed identically, so as you would expect, they behave the same way in the human body. So the first point is there's no difference between high fructose corn syrup and sucrose, and the second is with very limited exceptions, we've not found any adverse effects from either one of them in the normal ways we consume them at the normal levels we consume them in the human diet. So in your mind, is the issue resolved? Do you think there are other new or emerging issues that will need to be uh, resolved before we can really provide a definitive statement about the intake of sugar-sweetened beverages? Well, I think that the, the key issue, first of all, I want to be very clear that I am not suggesting that people consume huge amounts of sugar-sweetened beverages. But I think the guidelines that we have from the dietary guidelines for Americans, which say it's safe to consume up to 25% of calories in sugar-sweetened beverages, I think those are appropriate. There's no danger in consuming them. I think there are a lot of questions that still remain, but there's also a lot of hysteria about this, where we, we, we take a complex situation like obesity and we say, well, if gee, if we could just cut down on sugar-sweetened beverages or added sugars in general, that would solve obesity. And I think that is a very slippery slope and almost certainly wrong. Uh, obesity is a complex disease. Uh, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of studies that suggest that it's the overconsumption of calories that leads to obesity, not one part of the diet. Thank you for so succinctly explaining that to us. Thank you.